Hey, what's up guys? Kane here with XBLA Fans. I'm going to be doing a quick video on everything I wish I knew before I started playing Ark. We're going to take you from that base on the left, or right, all the way to the base on the left. Now, I just got back into this game after playing a ton of it back when it was in game preview, and it finally came out on Xbox, and I kind of took a break. And now it just came back, and it's on um, Game Pass now, so I started getting back into it. So the first thing you're going to have to do when you first start off is you're going to have to make yourself a pickaxe. It's the most basic thing in the game. Just think like Minecraft. Just start gathering the resources. Punch a tree. You know, normally you're going to be able to find rocks. I'm in a late game area right here. I didn't want to have to boot up another server just to do this. This is a live PvP server. So, like, as I'm recording all this, I kind of got to pay attention to all that a little bit. Um, actually ending up having a hard time finding rock the correct way. So, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. You won't actually have one of these hatchets yet. You definitely won't have a metal hatchet. But what we got to do is we got to get all those different resources right there that you need for this. So we're going to need to get a little more thatch. Again, you can just punch the tree. It's going to give you thatch. It's going to give you wood. And this is how you're going to start the game. It's not a game that's going to hold your hand. It's not going to tell you what you need to do next. If you're looking for that kind of basic information, uh, this video probably honestly isn't even going to be the best one for that. I might do a separate video for that, but when it comes to just starter game, what you're really going to want to do is you're going to want to get yourself a little bit of a base hut as fast as possible and get yourself the basic tools as fast as possible. I'm going to kind of gloss over some of that and I'm going to give you a lot of other great information and a lot of stuff that I wish I'd known because I think this stuff to me is a little more obvious and a little more basic. So I'm going to go into some of the more complicated stuff. You're going to want to make yourself clothes, obviously. You can do that with just fiber. Um, you can get yourself a sleeping bag or a bed. You're going to want to build a little bit of a hut. We're going to work on that now in this video. As far as I'm concerned, early game, you really just need to get yourself from, uh, you know, low level to high level as quick as possible. There's some cheese strats for this. I don't know which one is currently the most effective. I know Wolf, uh, I played with another guy. His name's Wolf. He mostly spammed hats early on, whereas I mostly spammed thatch. So, you know, I was building a ton of foundations. He was just building hats. Uh, both of us leveled pretty quickly. We ran around killing as much as we could, including alphas, because at an early game level, we knew the tricks to be able to make an alpha kill pretty safe. That's a really easy way to power level. If you can get yourself a bow and you can find an alpha in an area where he's kind of glitched, or, you know, if you know how to drag him out into the water, there's some tricks for that. I might do a separate video on that, depending on how this one's received. So you guys let me know what you want to see. And we'll see what we can do with all of that. And hopefully we can get that going. Uh, I was starving here, so I need to eat real quick. I'm going to jump cut just because you don't need to see me grab all the resources from inside my little vault there. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit, just getting everything you need. I'm going to show you guys this is all you really need when you're starting off early. Uh, I might tell you to suggest to put the bed down before you finish all the walls in the foundation. Because on console, it's not necessarily the easiest to get it in when you have to stand inside the hut. Um, I'm not worried about this one being perfect, but obviously you're going to want to be able to line up as much um, of these uh, bed. You want to get one bed, but you're going to want to get as many of the mortar and pestles as possible. Because those things work as a very, very good storage device early. And that's going to allow you to have what you need to store your stuff and also craft what you're going to need to craft. I'm going to have to grab some resources real quick and just finish one of those. Um, but it's a really neat little trick. You can line up a ton of those, whereas you'd only be able to fit a couple storage boxes. Uh, the big downside is you cannot name these. And there's still, you know, someone just walks up, they can grab whatever's in them. But you can be a kind of pain with how you hide them in a sense. Uh, you can actually clip them under certain objects as well. Uh, I did that at one of my bases where I actually have one underneath the generator. Because I figure at that point, if you're already in my base and you've already destroyed my generator, well, congrats, you found it anyway. You know, like, you already had to get through all the turrets. Uh, this is just kind of a new base we're setting up. We did all this in about a week. So, you know, this is one of those games that when you learn all the tricks, you learn everything you're going to need to do, you're going to be able to do it a lot quicker, and you're going to be able to get a lot further in the game. I'm going to go over a lot of the stuff that we did. I don't know what that is. It spazzed me out because it looked weird. I think that is actually supposed to be a metal rock, and it just hasn't respawned right. Uh, because that's normally a metal rock when I spawn into this base. So we're going to go back in. We're going to, you know, just wrap some stuff real quick. 
I'm just going to put down the bed and I'm going to put down the mortar and pestle. Again, this is what I mean by it's a little bit harder when you actually have the building completely finished. You can't necessarily line it up as perfectly as you can when you're just using the foundation. Uh, you're going to normally want to get that stuff down perfect. You're not going to want to have a lot of extra space on either side that's going to allow you to be able to fit more stuff in. Uh, especially early game, you're going to want to have a base that you can hide. So you're going to want this to eventually be made out of wood and then stone. The best thing you can do when you're early game on a PvP server like this is, is you're going to want to have this in the middle of nowhere where it's hidden. Do not look at my current base and say, oh, I can just put it out in like the open. It'll be fine. This base is not very hidden. We're not as worried on this server because for whatever reasons, uh, the bigger tribes have kind of left us alone. Uh, we got broken into once, but they haven't wanted to mess with it ever since we uh, got our turrets up and got full metal on everything. Uh, my base is actually like quad walled and I'll kind of explain a little bit on how some of that works. I'm not going to do a detailed tutorial on that. That's something you can see in another video if you really want to. Um, I will show you a cool little trick here when you're going to have to cook food. Uh, this is something I thought was really neat, something that I wish I'd known a long time ago. Uh, when you're trying to cook food quickly, it'll cook fish and meat as if they're separate stacks. So they'll both cook at the same time. So I have an industrial cooker up there, if you notice. Um, and I can just flash cook everything really, really fast now. But when you're starting off at the game, that's something you're going to be missing out on. If you're missing out on that, uh, it just kind of sucks. So, you know, when you need the food really, really quick, this is one of the best ways to do it. I wish I'd known that a lot sooner. It is a really, really clutch tip. All right, so let's talk a little bit about attributes. What you're going to see here is what I'm currently specced at. Uh, I'm not going to claim that any of these are optimal. They're definitely not optimal if we're talking for pure PvP. Uh, but a lot of this is just stuff I've done to be able to level quickly. It fits my comfort style and it just makes it easier for me. So I live up in the north. That's why I have as much fortitude as I have because I need to worry about the weather. The melee damage is going to allow you to be able to get extra damage when you attack. But also extra renewable resources. Uh, things like food and water and oxygen I don't typically mess with. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have stamina. And on yourself, you're going to want to make sure you level up your movement speed any chance you can. Unfortunately, that's not an option with the bird itself. That would have been fantastic. I would have loved that. So now you're going to realize that, at least for me, my most important animal, I would say, is this Argy. Um, when you're first playing and you first start off, it's going to be a little bit different. You're probably going to be worried about your, your early game tames. To me, the best things you can do as an early game tame is going to be a Raptor and a Trike. Uh, I'm just kind of showing you guys some of the stuff you can do with the, uh, the wheel. It's really convenient. It's one of the reasons I like to leave my bird on follow when I am on him is let's just say I got knocked off. Whether it was by another animal or a player, someone can just snatch you off your bird and throw you down. It's one reason I always run with these parachutes on me just in case. It's a very, very clutch item. In fact, there's a ton of items in this game that you're going to think are kind of a joke. I'm going to talk about as many of them as I can, trying to get you guys a little bit of a heads up on those. So like parachutes and um, spyglass um, and bolas, those are all actually much more essential than you'd probably ever think. There's a lot of good uses for all of them. Uh, here's a great use for the spyglass. This is a situation that used to happen to me all the time and I could not figure out how to fix it. My bird's in the air. How do I save him? I don't want to have to tame a new bird. Somebody help me. You know, whistle all wasn't working, even when I could see him. And then I realized, okay, if I use this spyglass and I look at him, it's a little hard right now with the sun, but if I look at him with the spyglass, I whistle just him, he's going to come back. And that's clutch as heck. You really don't realize how often this is going to happen. At least for me, our birds are always getting in trouble. There's a pretty big joke between Wolf and I over who kills the most birds. Right now it's him. Knock on wood. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised if I do kill this in the middle of this video because it's not that hard to do. So, I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to kind of show you guys some of the different tricks you can do to whistle your bird while you're in the middle of combat. Um, my goal here is just find something weak that I can kill pretty easily. 
I'll check it out on my spyglass. That'll let me see the animal level. And then I'll just hop off and, you know, let him fight it. And then I can whistle him out of combat if I need to. And that's just kind of a nice thing. But nothing ever seems to go according to plan. Uh, we got a Prolovia. And that guy's just kind of a dick. Right now, my guy is on passive. Notice he's not attacking. I don't know why I re-whistled him on passive. But I'm just going to run away. Since he is following me, he will eventually come. This is one way to get him out of combat if you're worried about that situation. Uh, normally, I leave my bird on neutral, which means he would immediately turn and start fighting that Perlovia. Let's just say that Perlovia is a higher level than him, or, you know, actually a threat. It may not be a Perlovia. Let's just say it's a Rex, something that I'm actually scared of. You know, that's one way to get out of that situation. Now, of course, because, you know, nothing ever works for me right with birds, and again, this is why I know all this stuff, because I've screwed it up way more times than I can ever count. Of course, there's going to be another bird just coming out here, just to come fight me. So, you know, I got my bird back on neutral. I'm happy. I'm content. I think I'm safe. Don't know why he went all the way out of the way there. I think I shoot my own bird at least twice during this clip. And this is a perfect example of what I mean by stuff does not always go the way you want. Uh, this is a level 145 or something. It's way higher than my RD. It's not necessarily something I really wanted to fight. Um, I think I hit him enough that, you know, he's kind of getting beat up. But I'm not as worried. Especially with the fact mine is a saddle. But I'm 90% sure I shot my own bird at least twice. So that's something you got to be careful of. And of course my own gun breaks, which makes it a pain in the butt here. Because I don't personally like letting him fight by himself. There's just too much risk uh, when it comes to that. Now, when you do get on him and start fighting with him, you're going to end up draining his stamina. Whereas if you just kind of leave him alone, that's not going to be an issue. So he'll just continue to fight without you, you know, and you would have been fine. You wouldn't be draining the stamina in the same way. Um, but it's definitely going to start going down pretty noticeably while I'm on him. You can see the health bar is pretty low. That's what gets me a little nervous here, because again, I can tell this thing's hitting pretty hard. I don't have any weapons on me right now other than my sword, which is not really going to be any use against a flying bird. So I'm just going to try to make sure we take this guy out, but this is why you learn all those quick whistles, because there's so much you can do with them. Now, yes, you can access the bird itself and, you know, set everything manually. You can set a ton of cool things, like ordering in groups and other various things. That'll let you do a lot of uh, a lot of unique things there if you really want to get into some things. But I'm not getting super, super focused on any one topic for this video. I'm kind of trying to give you guys a little bit of an overview. So we're just going to take this thing out real quick and uh, live to see another day. Because I kind of need this bird for the rest of this video. Otherwise, it is not going to work. So 140 Argy. Uh, when you take it out, you get his uh, loot that was on him. So you don't have to grab it out of the bag. That's pretty cool. Always nice to see that. So we're going to jump to just the fact that you can see we have an absurd amount of tames. Uh, you may be sitting here saying, this video is stupid. Why don't you tell me how to get an animal? And if that's what you're wondering, we're going to go over some of the basics real quick here. Uh, just on how you do some of this stuff. And I'm going to go over a few other things along the way. So don't just jump ahead just in case. Um, a lot of these clips I have have like three or four minor points attached to a major point, so I'm going to kind of talk about them. Again, you can see another example of an airlock. Uh, pretty much every base entrance is going to have one of those. I think I'm going to talk about those in depth a little bit later, uh, but this is something that's pretty important. Uh, here's a little trick for spoiled meat if you haven't learned it yet. You can split them. Each spoiled meat has the same timer. You know, so if you have it set at like 10 seconds left, if you split them with 10 seconds left, they will all have 10 seconds left. It's not going to reset them or anything, so there's nothing you can play around games there. But you can spoil it quicker like this, and it's actually something you're going to want to do from time to time to make narcotic. It's super, super helpful, because even spoiled meat is something that will have, um, you know, kind of its own consumable timer. In fact, anything you see with that yellow bar below it is going to have a spoil time. And that includes things like flowers and mushrooms. Now, here's a little trick that I like to use, and I use this pretty regularly. Whenever I'm farming on something like the Mammoth, especially when I see that there might be problems, you know, there's an RD right there. He could easily start deciding that he wants to just fight me today. 
Uh, they're very territorial. That's something you're going to want to learn pretty quickly, is what animals are going to directly be aggressive, what animals are only going to mess with you if you mess with them, and what animals are going to mess with you if you get within a certain space of them. Now, the mammoth here is incredibly good at harvesting berries. The reason why we have so many teams is because each one of them is a specialist in a specific area. So the mammoth is really good for wood, he's really good for carrying, and he's really good for berries. It's incredibly good for all of those. You notice we also have a beaver. The beaver is also great for wood, but it's a completely different kind of strategy with him. With the beaver, I can actually pick him up with the Argy and carry him around like a little bag almost. You know, he will basically make the wood, the thatch, and the fiber way less, which is just kind of cool. Now, the reason I like to have the uh, cat following the mammoth is because if I'm going to get way ahead of him. This makes sure that the mammoth and the cat always stay kind of together. This is my way of getting them down the mountain quicker. I'm not worried if they jump off a cliff because they will not really take fall damage. In fact, that's actually kind of a trick. If you are going to fall off a mountain and you realize it, jump off. It's another reason to carry a parachute. Your dino will typically be fine. You can kind of just glide down to them. They will take fall damage if you ride them off a cliff. Uh, trust me, Wolf has done it in the past week with an Anki. And it was, a, it was an interesting fall to say the least way off the top of a mountain so now we're gonna like you know make all that narcotic that narcotic is how we're gonna tame something i'm gonna pretend we're a cooking show and i've got all this stuff already prepared here uh this base just happens to have some leftover straggler stuff which is just what i need right now we're gonna get some stuff now i'm gonna go grab the first thing i see just knock it unconscious just so you guys can see how this works we actually have another video on this channel that includes a bunch of information on taming uh, it's a little bit dated. I know that, you know, the stuff that I'm recording now in 2019 is going to be a little bit different than what you're going to see from what we recorded in 2016, 2015. I don't even remember that. So, you know, it's a completely different game at this point in some ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to equip those narc arrows and we're just going to start shooting this wolf. I didn't look at the level when I grabbed him. He is insanely high level. I do not recommend ever taming something this high necessarily you're almost better off just letting it level and naturally because this guy is gonna have so many wasted stats you're gonna see it when i get him knocked off he's gonna have like 500 oxygen which is just like who on earth would put that many points into oxygen in a wolf like we have a wolf down in our pen that has you know like 3,000 health and like 200 300 percent melee damage that thing is a beast this thing right here is kind of worthless so if you notice he's not even like looking at me anymore i can kind of just jump in the pen with him and just start shooting him it is going to take forever so when you do start a tame you should look this stuff up online otherwise you're going to get stuck doing what i was doing which is shooting a thousand arrows into a guy just to knock him unconscious you don't want to waste multiple days just taming something you know you don't want to wait not that it's going to be days in real life time but days in arc time you know like for me to tame this it would have taken i think two and a half hours something absurd like that so when you are taming it you're just going to put your narcotic on it and you're going to put your food on it so it once it's out you can just knock it out you can check its inventory you can see its stats which is actually really convenient because in this instance i looked at it and I saw, I'm not taming this. It is not worth the amount of effort, not worth the amount of time. I just want to knock it unconscious and then kill it and eat it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to help you guys figure out, um, you know, what you need to do just to get it going. So, I mean, there are some tricks you can learn to this. I'm showing you the absolute most basic for this video which is just stick the meat on it obviously there's other types of meat you can get prime you can get mutton you can get you know kibble you can get a little more complicated here and you can also play some games with the food bar um gotta be careful with when i whistle all because you end up with this kind of hell hole but this actually works out really well for another point because now i'm just going to kill this dumb wolf i don't really like him uh it's not that great you know stat wise it's just not worth it but I gotta do it without hitting Sean Taylor over there. So I'm gonna knock this wolf out, finish him off, 
And then I'm going to drag his body, which is uh, more gruesome when I describe it than it actually is. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that he will eat the food. Now that he is there, we can knock him out, like I said. Well, he's already knocked out. I don't know why I keep saying we're going to knock him out. We're just going to kill him, you know, because our dinos need food. I mean, it's it's if you don't like doing this, <laughs> this is like the main part of the game. You're going to have to constantly kill stuff to get food. But poor Wolf, I liked him. He could have been cool. He had terrible stats. It's really not worth it. Um... Taylor's in the way, but the cool thing is you can actually drag bodies so I can get that body away where it's not gonna, you know, cause me to hit him. Now, something you need to learn in this game is that every tool does something different. Um, this is another good example here. This is different. I'm using this pickaxe. It should give me more meat, less pelt, less hide, whereas the hammer, or not hammer, but the hatchet would give me more hide. Um, Sword is super convenient for some various other things, but let me show you guys a different kind of taming. There is a second way to tame animals, uh, completely different, and this is passive taming. This gets a lot of people confused because it is completely different than the other taming. Uh, our other taming video gets complaints all the time because people will be like, oh my god, I can't tame that animal the way you showed us. And it's like, well, that's because you have to do something different for this one. You need to get raw fish meat for this guy, and you'll actually just hand it to him. You stick it in your last inventory item slot, and you just continue to hand it. I'm going to get away from that manta. Those things can get kind of annoying. Uh, but yeah, that's the gist of that one. Uh, some animals will want berries. Some animals will want meat. Some will want raw prime meat. Some will want fish. You know, it just kind of depends on what you're taming. Everything's a little bit different. Now, we've talked a little bit about animals, we've talked a little bit about yourself, we talked a little bit about resources, I'll get more into that in a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about bases. I'm going to go back in and talk about airlocks again. This is a double, triple, quadruple walled area in general. Almost all of these have at least two doors, some have up to three or four, and they're all airlocked to keep it to where if someone breaks in, they now have to go through another set of doors to get to what they actually want to get to. Like, even there, they have to break through more sets of walls. And that's kind of what you need to make sure you do. Now, there's some cool tricks you can do with the inventory. Up here, you can transfer all. It'll only transfer items that can actually go into that object. So that's super useful with food, like you just saw there. You can transfer everything back to yourself and then transfer it all the way back. There's some nice things you can do with inventory. You just got to start to learn what those top bars up there mean. Uh, if you ever find yourself to where you can't see, you know, the tooltip icons, that's that top right icon on your crafting area. It's super, super useful uh, to have that on. I just noticed we have no gas in that. So we're going to, you know, fix that because I don't want our turrets to go offline. Uh, this base has multiple generators just to make it a little bit more of a pain at times. So, you know, even if the one goes out, the other's still running. So, like, here I can go and I can just, you know, grab the stuff off my inventory bar. Uh, that's something worth knowing, is that everything in your inventory bar is not actually going to, you know, jump into the thing if you unload your entire uh, inventory. It'll stay on you. Now, a cool trick you're going to want to learn is how to get your storage somewhat near where you're going to have to use it. Right here, I can carry really heavy amounts of metal and just swivel. I can pivot. You know, I don't actually have to take steps, so I'm never worried about my actual weight. Now, we're going to show off a little bit of the different biomes now. Uh, for the most part, you guys have seen me in the snow, but that is not the main biome of this game by any means. That's just where I like to hide my current base. Uh, the thing about the snow biome in particular that I like about it is a lot of the late game resources are up there. You're going to struggle with chitin, and you're going to struggle with a couple other, but that's about it. And they've made different ways around both of those, in a sense. Uh, that is a Quetzal up there on the left. I need to get one of those at some point myself. That is, I believe, the biggest flyer you're going to see on this map. I kind of forget every once in a while, because they have continued to add stuff. I've been playing this game again probably non-stop for the last, uh, I don't know, you know, two weeks. Ever since it came into Game Pass, I've been just kind of going hard on it, just trying to get, you know, familiar with it again. There's a lot of different biomes that you're going to see over the course of this. 
between the snow biome, the beach, the canyons, the rivers, the grasslands. There's jungle, there's redwoods, there's lava, um, and swamp and other stuff. Now, when I land, I always try to land and near all those kind of bigger kind of herbivores that I know aren't going to mess with me. The reason I do that is because normally if all of them are there, I'm not going to have to worry about a raptor or something just kind of randomly jumping me. Uh, the swamp biome, I have nothing to do with. I avoid this thing like the plague. I hate it. A, it is incredibly hot, and you got to have special gear for it. Kind of like how I have to have special gear to be in my area up north. Uh, it is a very good spot to hide a base, though. And unless someone just happens to be flying overhead, uh, you can put down a physical base, or you can even do kind of one of those little swamp river boats like uh, the Zolomon tribe has there. So it's just a nice little thing. The reason I also hate this is there are tons of bugs and snakes and other creatures that are just not fun to deal with. I am not a big fan of having to deal with giant snakes that knock you unconscious. Uh, if you do have to, you know, get involved with any of the creatures that are going to knock you out, whether it's a snake or a uh, um, scorpion or whatever else... Uh, make sure you carry some stim berries on you at all times. That's what's going to knock your torpor back up and make it so that you don't get knocked out. In fact, each of the berries is actually kind of useful. I don't know why I say each because really you want to worry about your medjo berries, your narc berries, and your stim berries. Uh, each of those drops obviously has a different kind of loot table. I'm not going to go for that one. I see some raptors in the area. Just not worth it. It's not going to be anything special anyway, and that's not what we're here for. So, I'm just going to keep flying around a little bit. We're going to go check out the redwood biome real quick. I'm not going to actually go inside the tree line of this because I have been knocked out by one of those flying cats that climbs the trees and jumps on birds. And man, those things are annoying. So, I kind of avoid that area. That right there is going to be a alpha... You got an Alpha Carno. Uh, early game, those are your big threats you need to worry about. Is going to be your Raptors and your Alphas. Especially your Alpha Raptors. You'll occasionally see an Alpha Carno. And you might see a T-Rex or an Alpha T-Rex. I strongly doubt it in the starter areas. Though I did see a Giga when I was flying around the other day. Um, so you really never know. In fact, I'm going to land here in a second. And be incredibly surprised by what's on my left. So you really, really never know what you're actually going to see. Uh, they kind of move around a little bit from time to time. Like, I know I've seen Allosauruses at my snow base from uh, every once in a while. It's rare, but they're occasionally there. That is a really cool looking variant of a Rex, though. I kind of like that one. Uh, one of the things I love about this game anymore is that they have kind of done all these different recolors and colors. And you're also going to see the tech animals, which are pretty freaking sweet. Uh, the Redwood Biome allows you to actually put up like an Ewok village if you wanted to. You know, you could go crazy with it. Uh, Spino right there on my right is another dino that I highly suggest you don't mess with early game. Um, it's pretty powerful. A lot of the stuff you're going to see in this area is a little stronger than some of the stuff you see in the starter areas, but it's not too bad. Uh, each area is going to have some drawbacks. They're going to have some plus. They're going to have some minus. Uh, this is obviously a pretty cool location. I've enjoyed this river for the most part. Uh, it is a heavily trafficked area right now in PvP in a sense. I see players here all the time. So I would definitely be careful of building your base along a body of water like this because a body of water like this is going to be the type of area where you're constantly seeing people. Uh, don't forget that if you do put piping back to your base, uh, they're going to be able to trace that piping from the body of water to find you. So even if you hide yourself really well in, you know, like the woods or something, uh, that's something they're going to still be able to find you off of. You need to be careful on some of these mountains because A, I don't know what's on the other side, and B, there could be a Giga that just falls on my head because that's happened at least twice recently where I'm just kind of minding my own business and a giant, giant Giga just goes flying out there and takes a bite out of my bird. 
And that knocks off like half the health instantly. So you've got to be careful of that every once in a while. And this thing's pumped for health. This is the volcano. Uh, it's a pretty cool little area in my opinion. It's, uh, it's definitely a little different. I'm going to swoop in and just let you guys take a look here. I'm actually also going to talk a little bit about resources off this. Uh, this is a good spot for me to do that. Uh, we're going to swoop down there, get a good little look of the lava and some of the other stuff down there. But those rocks up there are metal and obsidian. Those are huge late game resources you're going to need. Uh, one of the coolest parts about this entire game is the fact that every dino and every tool kind of does something. So when you have to harvest, you know, those, you're going to want to use your uh, uh, pickaxe while wow, it's blanking for a second or an anki. Um, when it comes to like stone, you're going to want to use a hammer or, or not a hammer, a hatchet or a dodic. And then when you need to use, you know, various things like thatch or wood, you're going to change up again, you know, between your pickaxe and your hatchet respectively. There's also different dinos that do each of those, and that is just super, super cool to me. I really like how that works. In fact, I actually thought I recorded a clip on that, but I don't seem to see it in here. So I'm just kind of leaving you that information now while we fly around a little bit. So I'm just going to head out of this volcano. Obviously, I'm in the middle of a fog. It's not going to render the levels right. Um, kind of see, you know, like, I think that's a cave down there that's actually kind of showing because of this. So you can get some weird things that'll happen periodically when you're at, like, elevation and whatnot. So we're going to jump ahead here. So we're going to head back north, and I'm just going to talk about beacons a little bit. Each of these beacons uh, contains different levels of gear. Um, it's very, very dependent on, you know, what level you are, what you're hoping to find. Um, I'm actually colorblind, so I actually don't know these off the top of my head because I can never tell them. I always have issues with trying to see them, uh, so I, like, honestly just kind of forget about them a lot of the times, so I just go for them. Because, I mean, what you're really hoping for is red and yellow in general at a high level. Um, blue is going to be pretty low, you know, purple is going to be pretty low, but that yellow red beacon, it's going to be your kind of ideal one, so that's what you're really hoping for. Uh, you'll see white and you'll see green. And, like, those are the ones that every once in a while kind of trigger me because I'll grab a green one thing and it's yellow and I'll get all disappointed. Another cool thing about this game is these ruins. A trick with these is always walk up on your animal because when they do trigger, it's going to give you bonus XP and other various things that are super, super useful to have. A uh, nice little trick is when you're on your bird and you're just kind of traveling in the middle of a weather storm like this, you can drink. That's one thing that makes a... Uh, canteen or a water jar or even a uh, water skin super useful is you're able to get you know stuff from that obviously this is super clutch to learn what all these different symbols mean you're gonna see that up arrow i know there's an alpha nearby i'm gonna bother or you know not bother with that there's a bunch of carno alpha like carnos with that carno alpha i'm gonna kind of get away um, you're going to see the mated T-Rexes up here on the left, and you can tell that by the little part. Uh, you don't want to mess with mated animals in general. They are almost always going to wreck you. They're much stronger like that, and that's something you want to kind of be careful of. Now, one of the cool things about this is, like, you know, the snow will literally change to rain. And another reason why that spyglass is so essential is I showed this a little bit earlier in the video is you're gonna be able to use that spyglass to now look at enemy structures. It'll tell you basically, you know, who it belongs to, and I think it even tells you the health, which is just kinda of nuts, you know, that you can see that from that far away. It's super, super useful, and something that you're gonna to wanna to always try to carry one of those with you. Um, there's too many uses for it, whether it's saving your own dino, or, you know, just checking stuff like that. Like, I like to be able to, you know, look at these beaver dams, and make sure it's there, you know. I'm mostly highlighting it right now just to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, this is an example of something they've added into the game since I actually stopped playing a long time back. And this allows you to get things like cementing paste a lot quicker. Now the trick with these is if you don't destroy them, they do not respawn. You have to grab a ton of crap that you probably can't carry and you're going to have to get out of there quicker. Uh, a lot of times we'll do these two man where I uh, drop 
my friend off. He grabs the stuff. I grab the beaver that runs to attack him. And that's just a really convenient way to not have to necessarily deal with getting attacked by a beaver. But you can just kind of, you know, move him around and then kite him away and then just go back and finish it off. If I left it up, it would, you know, respawn the stuff and you'd actually destroy it some more and come back and grab more later. A lot of people don't do that, um, whether they just think, you know, someone else would do it for them or what, who knows. Uh, one nice thing about this RD right here is I kept forgetting to get a food. I can just kind of grab something weak like this and just kill it in the air while just kind of, you know, flying around waiting. And that's just something that really makes that just such a good all-purpose animal. Uh, something you might not even know is that the RV and the beaver, in fact, can be used as a forge. Which, or a smithy. Always get those two mixed up. I literally always get those two mixed up. The refining forge and the smithy. You can be used as a mobile smithy, which is just super useful. Uh, the sword is another item that, honestly, I used to think was kind of stupid. I was like, who would use the sword? I have guns. Uh, the sword is incredibly good for organic polymer, and uh, penguins are really good in general for meat, organic polymer, and raw prime meat. It's a little bit surprising, like the amount of raw prime meat you can get really quickly from some penguins is actually pretty high. Uh, if you're looking for animals that you can just take out to get raw prime, if you actually have, you know, a fridge with you, it's not hard to get enough stored up. Uh, obviously mutton is still better, but I didn't manage to find any mutton when I was flying around earlier today. So I don't have any of that in this clip, um, but mutton is great. Now a little trick if you're struggling with just kind of killing stuff in general. This is very, very basic. I'm going to get rid of this kind of uh, Daedon because he's annoying as hell. I hate these creatures. They're almost enough to make me not want to be in the north. Uh, just because they really, really are tanky sons of a gun. I do not like them. At all. So we're going to take him out. But what I like to do is just find natural areas of land like this. And this works especially well when all you have is a um, bow and arrow. I mean, I have a gun now. I can kite just about anything, especially a mammoth. I'm not worried about them. But this is a natural kind of choke point that animals are going to get caught in. And you can use this as a pit to just kind of make it a kill pit. And it's just kind of a clutch little way to make sure you can get the resources you need or level up. There's actually going to be a Daedon that kind of pisses me off here and jumps at me in a second. And just kind of ruins this idea. But this has kind of been a lot of the stuff that I wish I'd been more familiar with when I first started playing the game. I jump through a lot of the really basic stuff fast. If you guys actually want like a beginner's beginner's guide, let me know. If you want me to jump into any one of these individual topics, just let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough interest, we'll do definitely do it. I've been loving this game. I got way back into it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to try to keep this video series going. I think Astro Near might be the next one we look at. But thank you guys so much for checking this out. Please do like and subscribe. You guys have no idea how much that helps us. Anyways, thank you guys so much and later.